New music is, in the simplest definition, music that hasn't been heard before. And, you know, and it, it may build on a tradition or it may try and break with a tradition. And I think that's the challenge for people who aren't familiar and don't live with new music all the time. I tend to live in the world of the tradition of music and in the context of all the other music that I'm listening to on a, on a regular basis because I listen to a lot of different kinds of music. And so for me, it's very contextual. I always find his musical ideas clear and, um, and I enjoy working with him because, and playing his music because usually there's there's a lot of experimentation, like he's grown as a composer, um, he's trying a lot of new things, so that the music he wrote 30 years ago is far different than the music he writes today, and, and I like that. I kind of go back and forth, um, improvise a bit. Sometimes I record it on my phone, just depending on where I am and how much time I have. Um, sometimes it's just a little melody, and then I usually play at the piano and I'll chicken scratch out and then I go to the computer, I put it into the computer, then I come back and I chicken scratch out again and kind of work my way through that. But it's like writing a book or writing a term paper or something. You, you have to get your ideas out, sometimes on all kinds of different pieces of paper, and then you pull them together and edit and refine. And then I kind of tried to do a front to back so that there's good flow. Um, once you have the, 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 the idea of the form and the, the structure. So again, you're trying to work with the musical ideas so that, that you get enough out of them. Like you don't like to have just an idea and then it, you don't do anything with it. You've got to do something with it. It has to evolve or grow or at, at least for, for my kind of music. I mean, you can have things that are quite serene and slow, but they still have to have some kind of purpose to them. Pat is a very generous composer. He gives us an idea, but he really lets us run with it. If, if he has, I guess, faith in you as a performer, he gives you literally free range to interpret things as you see fit. I think you have to be a composer, like as a, it's part of your core. Either you are or you aren't. And some people have the potential to be a composer but don't realize it. And some people think they can be a composer and they can't. So in, in my case, I really don't have a choice. The music is in my head and it will come out or I will have a problem. The first song is entitled Death and it's about the mythical character Orpheus. It's in German and it made me think of a couple of different composers, Claudio Monteverdi, the Italian Renaissance composer, and Robert Schumann, German Romantic composer. And Schumann was famously uh, put into an insane asylum and died there. So it's a lot about that tortured romantic soul.
Music just came out of my head, so I wrote songs when I was very young, wrote them down on the piano or sang in a band or whatever, and it's just trying to evolve from this stuff coming out of your head, kind of randomly, to formally becoming a composer and learning how to be a professional musician. So I played in bands, I played in concert bands, I played in pub bands, I played in cover bands, I played in jazz bands. You, in, you know, basically anything that was musical, I was drawn to. I think, you know, composing should be expressing who you are as a person. And the same thing, you know, will obviously come out in other things that you do in life. And for me, that's cooking. I started out in Winnipeg, grew up in the north end of Winnipeg, northeast end of Winnipeg, kind of a tough neighborhood in East Elmwood. Uh, but as soon as I could drive, I was in the car and driving around Winnipeg to play in different, different places. Mary Jo and I got married when we moved to Banff because they wouldn't actually let you cohabit in, in 1980 unless you had a marriage certificate. So we got married and, and we moved to Banff. And we've been married now for over 36 years. Mm -hmm. 
I came in mostly as an administrator and only and slowly managed to move over to teaching. However, the interesting thing was when I first came here, I always had a studio where I would compose music and every once in a while someone would knock on my door and say, I think I might be a composer. And so I was very, very fortunate to have some extremely talented young musicians show up on my doorstep and become my students. I, I tend not to have the electronics go full out all the time. You want a different textures of sound. I think for me there's a certain responsibility, right, to pass on information and an approach to music and to work with young musicians who are trying to figure out how they fit into this world. The second song is entitled Murder and it's based on a madrigal by a famous Renaissance composer uh, who was also famously a murderer. He killed his wife and her lover, chopped them up into little pieces and left them outside the front of his castle. But because he was a prince, he was actually let off. It, it was fine. So there's little bits of poetry in Italian from poets at the time who wrote about him and references to this beautiful madrigal that's about love and pain and, and death.
Well, I think now I have to change the rhythm in measure 26. In pain? pain. Yeah, pain. Because I think you do it like eighth to a dotted quarter. Each movement in Crazy brings together relationships between poetry and music, historical figures, mythological figures, and looks at the question, like, how far over to the crazy side do you have to go to be creative? And what if you can't come back? Each movement looks at kind of a different issue, and so they have one-word titles, and they usually deal with something problematic. And I reference the music of the composers or poetry that relates to it and, and all kinds of different ideas. Yeah, so I think, I think so. I'll, I'll probably change that rhythm. Oh, I, right at 25? Grange there is. 26. 26. Grange there is a miser. Oh, well, the yeah. wonderful thing about being married to another musician is that they kind of have a point of reference for my own crazy. Like when I have ideas and I get obsessed with things or when I've totally burnt myself out on a project or whatever. And Mary Jo and I have, have been together for a long time and our musical flow back and forth has always been really constructive. I think we actually make a pretty remarkable team and uh, I have a high high regard for him. I really respect uh, him as a composer. And uh, he's always been extremely confident in me. So um, I think we make a good team. What does she sing? Uh, she, Is it she, straight quarters? Uh, no, she goes. She's going to be off the beat. So it's a dotted eighth sixteenth. Um, I would say that um, crazy isn't asking the pianist to do too many things that we're unused to. Um, the notation is pretty standard, pretty traditional notation. The extended techniques is really not all that major um, for pianists. I think for, for uh, Naomi it's a little different because she's asked to do a number of different things that most singers <laughs> are not actually challenged to do. I love performing crazy for so many reasons. It really is crazy. There's so many things going on. Five songs, five different languages. So just the range of what I can do as an artist from song to song, I love it. That's the chimes, yeah? Yeah. Up top. The telephone. Pat wrote in some really fun stuff for me to do. I get to play the harmonica. I get to play the bass guitar, which I studied years ago. And Pat sort of, when he was thinking about writing this piece, he's like, you play the bass guitar, right? I'm like, I, I played the bass guitar 20 years ago. You just have faith that the beauty of the musical idea will be returned. Because that's not always the case. You send it out there and people who don't know your style and haven't quite figured it out, they'll bring a different set of ideas and it may not gel completely. So, so the, the one, and I think historically many composers have had that kind of close relationship with specific musicians and it really gives them the creative urge to do more and try new things. The third song is Lust and its reference point is from the opera Faust by uh, the French composer Berlioz. And there's also a little bit of reference to Goethe's Faust in there. So there are references to bits of an aria, and it's this wonderful young woman in the, in the opera who's being pursued by the devil.
The fourth song is called Burnt, and it uses a Spanish text, and it was uh, kind of an interesting rhythmic pattern that caught my attention there, and it happens in a drum as well as in the piano part, this a repeated rhythm, and then a very Spanish flowing melodic line.
The problem with composers is that we work al kind of alone in a little room by ourselves. And we have very high standards usually for what the musical idea will be. And so we're fighting with ourselves all the time. Is that good enough? Can I push it harder? All of that. And then you give it to musicians. And then you have the same thing again because they have to work with the technical issues of the music. Can I play that note? Is that too fast? How do I change from this page to the other? Do I jump inside the piano and do something? And you know, all of the technical things. And then the emotional things of how do I go from very sweet to very angry in, in such a short period of time. And so you have that interaction. Will they hate it? Will they like it? Will it be too challenging? Will it be challenging enough? So you have that. And then, of course, you go to the next level and you have the same issue with the audience again. And sometimes they like it and sometimes they don't. For us, at each level, it's, am I a failure? You know, like, <sighs> This is just horrible. I've worked a year on this piece and it's crap. You know, or it, you don't usually get the feeling that it's great very often. You know, and, but when you finally click with performers and it all goes the way that it's supposed to, that's when you have that possibility of thinking, yes, we did it. Then of course you have to go and write another piece and you start the grind all over again. The last song is entitled Pain. And its reference point is the composer and pianist Percy Granger, who collected the folk song that you hear at the beginning. And then I go into a repeated chord pattern that just kind of incessantly pushes towards the end. So it's this kind of tortured thing about a servant who's beaten by his master. And uh, the reference there is that Percy Granger also liked to be beaten before he would play a concert. He liked to be whipped and then he would actually bleed often through his shirt during the performance. So here's pain. <laughs> 